Year 8, good morning. This is your English teacher speaking. We have a list for you to make today as part of your new work on the Gothic horror genre, which means the type of literature that existed in the 18th and 19th century that involved certain themes. And I'd like you to list those themes today. Firstly, do you remember what occult means? Occult? Well, if not, let me remind you, it means anything to do with conjuring spells, communicating evil spirits, witchcraft. Do you remember any texts we've studied in the last few months that involved those things, witchcraft, conjuring, being people being possessed? Perhaps a story set in 1600s America? Perhaps a story in which neighbor accused neighbor of, of being possessed uh, out of witchcraft. Do you remember what that text was called? It was The Crucible, my friend. Now, for Gothic horror, the definition of Gothic horror, I'd like you to make a list for me. So could you Write the subheading down. What are the conventions of Gothic horror? All I want you to do for this lesson is to list the themes that you would expect to see in the stories such as Drac Dracula, Frankenstein, and so on. vampire stories in general. So we're going to look at what Gothic horror is, how to identify it, and how to link it to the 18th and 19th century. Your timetable looks like this. You'll notice that on Tuesday, this is the only time where we want you to send us independent work. This is so that you can plan your work more effectively around other subjects and to avoid the stresses of last term for both you and your parents. So on that list, shall we? Uh, Gothic horror involves ghosts and spirits. Taking Dracula, for example, he can appear ghost-like. Now, he appears as a mist one moment, he can change into a bat or a dog or even a human being. So he is effectively ghost-like and spirits are also the familiar theme of Gothic horror. It's ghosts and spirits. Um, castles and ancestral homes. An ancestral home is a home that's been in someone's family for a long time. They're usually large, stately homes, tall, imposing, which means grand or intimidating buildings or impressive buildings. Now, Gothic actually means German and Gothic architecture is a form of architecture that was around, that originated in Germany from the 1600s tall spires, narrow windows. The Houses of Parliament in England is a Gothic architecture. These are examples of Gothic architecture. You can see various cathedrals from around, from around Europe. There's Notre Dame, there's York Minster, and so on. So, Gothic architecture, imposing buildings, haunted houses, they're all parts of Gothic horror. Next, foreigners, please add this to your list. Dracula is considered to be an archetypal, that's to say, a version of a foreign man, that's to say, these. he's quite crudely given a, a thin nose, narrow lips, thin face, unusually shaped nostrils. This is Christopher Lee, in fact, an American actor, playing, British actor actually, playing uh, playing Dracula in the 1950s or 60s. His face was strong, thin nose, and particularly a peculiarly arched nostrils. That's a quote from Dracula, the novel. So, people in Gothic horror represent a an, uh, an impression of a foreigner. You also expect to see bad weather, dark colours, and remote and rugged landscapes. The opening of Frankenstein is set 
somewhere in the Russian in the Russian ice flows and Frankenstein's monster sometimes escapes to Switzerland, leaps over mountains because he has superhuman strength. The, the point is that this is a typically gothic theme, cold, bad weather, fog. So here's Frankenstein's monster, monster in some kind of icy backdrop. At the beginning of the novel, the narrator says, we are surrounded by thick fog. We were enveloped by thick fog. And there were vast and irregular plains of ice. So you would expect to see bad weather and darkness in Gothic story. More for your list, please. In extreme emotions and women in distress, Dracula tries to tempt a young woman called Mina into becoming his bride by biting the neck and he gradually over the course of days and weeks she loses blood overnight and she becomes imprisoned and in distress so gothic horror usually has some sort of strong male leading encouraging the distress of a, a vulnerable a lady there is a modern day version of the vampire myth showing a dominant male having his wicked way with a vulnerable young woman. In fact, Dracula struggles to control three women he lives with because he's unable to satisfy them or their appetites for blood. And he has to steal children in order to satisfy their, their lusts, if you like, for blood. You also expect to see imprisonment, desire, and the hero villain um women are often trapped where they are characters at the beginning of dracula are locked into castle dracula and dracula i would say some sort of hero villain in that he's trying to he's trying to travel to england dracula wants to move to london to piccadilly he's quite an elegant fashionable man he has elegant and refined contacts, solicitors, doctors, but he has a dark side. Here's a picture of a modern day version of Dracula. So you can see the heroic side, the neatly cut suit, the pressed shirt, the coiffed hair. He looks heroic in a conventional sense, but of course he's villainous. He murders people, he drinks their blood. He is a devious character, he imprisons people. So look out for that ambiguity of the hero villain. Please add those three to your list and make sure you are aware of the conventions of Gothic horror. Thank you.